for just another morning rant video. Um, so I wanted to talk about probably the most difficult part um, of my recovery journey. The biggest roadblock that I have experienced in getting help. And I think honestly it's a ridiculous concept and it just needs, it needs to stop. I have been told for a really long time that I fit into this category, this non-stereotypical, you know, mentally ill person, which is what they call a highly functioning individual, a highly functioning person with mental illness. Now, if you do have highly functioning personality traits, if that is kind of who you are as a person, as like an intelligent person that has a really high functioning capacity, then I think what goes along with that is, is a low functioning capacity. Now, my psychiatrist told me the last time that I was in hospital that, or I've been told actually by a number of mental health professionals that when you're a highly functioning individual and you're up here, the difference when you're sick and when you have such a low functioning capacity, because mental illness really does affect your functioning capacity that what lies between that gap, that drop in functioning, is complete distress, is complete and utter distress. Because to me, it, it's not who I am. It makes me question everything about who I am as a person, whether or not I'm a good person. It makes me feel like a failure, and my fear of failure is so intense. My success drive is really important to me. And, and to feel like a successful person, to feel like you know, I am, I'm getting somewhere in life or to feel like I'm, I'm functioning that, that I guess highly functioning is sort of normal to me. So not being able to function is, is definitely distressing. It's, it's horrible. But the worst bit is that doctors and, and people have used this excuse to, to not help me. And I think that's really frustrating. That's really I just, on my mind, I just can't comprehend it. Like, it's, it's mind-boggling, really. I've been told that I'm not sick enough for the public system, that I keep my shit together just enough to not get that help that I need, to not fit into that system, that stereotype of what someone with mental illness is like. And I think the public system is really geared towards helping people who are a threat to society people who i don't like using the term like unwell enough or or not sick enough because it's not really about that you know i think honestly it is that that threat to society thing because it doesn't mean that i'm i'm not sick it doesn't change my level of unwellness if you're a highly functioning individual you know you're up you're up here potentially like up here you know and if that's what your baseline is if that's kind of what you've been your whole life and suddenly you get sick you know that drops really drastically now this concept of like being unwell or not sick enough it's like someone whose functioning capacity might be about here they could drop like further than me on on a scale of on a universal rating of functioning but the thing is that doesn't mean that we haven't lost the same amount that it hasn't affected our lives in in any less of a significant way and potentially highly functioning individuals have actually dropped further that they've actually lost more functioning capacity they just had more more to begin with and i think the other thing is i present well i present as a highly functioning individual so for me, talking is easy, expressing myself is easy, and people think, you know, it's almost like I've made it up, that because I understand it so well, that because I have enough insight not to let myself get to that stage, you know, it's like, because I, I take ownership of my illness, because I'm proactive in my recovery, it's like I am punished for that. I am sort of disregarded and and not taken seriously. Serious, these flies, though, they are a serious issue. Um, and I think, like, at the same time, like, if I can't access the public healthcare system, 
but I'm not functioning well enough to hold a full-time job and, and have enough finances to access a very expensive private, private system. It's kind of, I do get stuck in this really, really gray area. I'm also not the type of person to ask for help. Even though I have been really persistent in getting help from my mental illness, because I've, you know, I trust, I guess, like medical professionals, I trust certain people because I know that they can help me. So I do ask for help. I've been begging for help for years. But as far as like in my general everyday life, I'm not, I'm not one to ask for help from other people because in a way, um, asking for help kind of makes me feel like a bad person. It invalidates one of my core beliefs, one of, one of my core values as a person and one of my core strengths, which is my independence my determination, my, I like, I pride myself on being self-sufficient, on being able to solve problems and asking for help kind of undermines a lot of that. But I think in a way, if you don't ask for help, then people probably don't realize that you need it. Um, and you know, I'm happy to say that finally I have been able to connect with medical professionals that have really, really helped me that have gone out of their way, that have taken me on board and have, you know, it only took me like probably a hundred different people, years of crying and begging and in doctor's offices and, you know, so much distress, so much trial and error. And, you know, if you don't get the answer that you want from, from one person, don't give up. And people ask me that with the amount of rejection that I've had, and particularly as a borderline with a fear of rejection, being rejected by the people that you're reaching out to, being rejected by the people, I guess, who have sworn an oath to help you, you know, that have the knowledge but are completely unwilling. It's like, why don't you think I'm worth saving? Why don't you want to help me? Like, what is wrong with me? And I think I've spent half my life convincing people that there is something wrong with me. And I know you're going to say, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. There's stuff wrong with the rest of the world. You know, that that's true. That might be true. But what I mean by there's something wrong with me, I mean like of that level of functioning capacity. I'm not functioning. I want to function. I can't do the things that I want to do in life. For a long time, for probably the last six to eight years, even maybe longer, like 10, 15 years, I, I have been barely surviving. Surviving to me is not what I expected of my life. Like struggling to survive, I think is just such a basic, fundamental human endeavor. You know, I want to thrive. I want to thrive as a person. And if you're not even living your life, all you're doing is surviving, you know, that's what I mean when I say something, something was wrong with me. That's what I mean when I say I'm in the pursuit of recovery. And that is what motivates me to keep going. Because one day I woke up and realized that I honestly cannot live like this anymore. So I either had the option to stop living or to change it, to find another way to live, to find a way to live in this world. And I think in a way I lost hope many times. A lot of things happened to me. Um, a lot of moments in my recovery journey made me question that belief, made me lose hope. But I think there was a part deep down in me, this, this rational part of me that just thought, this is, this, this is not all that I can be. There has to be answers. There has to be a way that I can overcome this. There has to be things out there, whether it be programs like people, medication, therapies, like there has to be things out there that can help me. And I have found a lot of things that can help me. And if you follow my blogs, you follow my social media, then, you know, you get a snapshot of those, those things that I share with you that have really helped me in my recovery journey. Um, so, you know, there is help out there. You know, you can get better, but I'm definitely not going to say it's easy. No, no, it's not easy. It's the hardest thing that you will ever do in your life. But, you know, it, it will be worth it at the end. And I don't think anyone would have chosen to live this existence. I don't think anybody was ever ready for it. And I still don't think I'm ready for it, even though I kind of know what to expect. I mean, at any day, at any moment, I can just change. I can just go downhill really, really quickly. 
And that is probably the most important thing that I've learned about my illness and managing my illness is that this, this level of functioning capacity fluctuates so much, especially when you have five mental illnesses that really do affect your functioning capacity. There is not a moment of my life where I'm not affected by, by at least one of them. So finding treatments and combinations for every single one of them, understanding the individual ways in which they affect my life was key in learning how to manage them. But I have learned that I'm probably never going to have a full-time job. And people say to me, oh, are you, are you going to look for full-time work, you know? Um, like that's kind of what's expected of people in society. And it's really clear that that's never going to be what I can do. These flies, I sweat. There's like at least six flies crawling on me now. They're everywhere. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm never going to be able to function at that level of capacity. Well, it's not that I'm, I'm never going to function at that level of capacity. I'm just going to find my own way to do it. If I can just suddenly go downhill, if, if suddenly I need to be in hospital, if suddenly I can't get out of bed, well, I've had to create a lifestyle that allows me to exist, that allows me to manage those moods, to, you know, lower my workload when I really need to. Um, yet when I have a, a higher functioning capacity, um, then, you know, I, I've, I've decided to write books, to write my blogs, to do all of these things because I can do that even in my bad state. And when I'm like functioning, I can definitely put all my time and energy into that. So that's probably why you noticed I've been uploading like four or five YouTube videos a day because I can do that right now. I have that, that level of functioning and, you know, I'm putting that out there. Um, at times in, in the past, especially with my YouTube I, you know, I haven't posted in like three months because I just, I just haven't been able to do that. Um, so changing my lifestyle, realizing that I often say to people, you know, people prioritize work as, as the biggest thing in their life. Like that's their number one priority. And whether they'll admit that or not, what people do is they, they search for work and then they try and plan their life around their work schedule. And I say to people, if what is important to you, if what makes you happy is, um, you know, surfing or, or hobbies or spending time with family, if what I need in life is to be able to see my doctors, is to be able to maintain regular appointments, then having a job, prioritizing a job with bosses that call me in all the time, that don't allow me to have the time off when I need it, well, that is completely going to destroy my mental health. That is going to destroy every bit of work that I have. But if I say to myself, this is the things that I need in life, this is what I need to stay well, and I prioritize those things above all else, because honestly, they are the most most important things, because without without your mental health, without your sanity, you, you honestly have nothing. So if I prioritize those things, then I think naturally what you're going to do is you're going to seek work, you're going to seek some, you know, everything else in your life, you'll plan around those things that are really important to you. So I guess like knowing your limits, knowing where you are are and are not capable of, and I guess accepting that, like radical acceptance of that is really important. And understanding that probably most people are not going to understand it. Most other people are not going to accept it. They're always going to expect more for you based on the social norms or what, what they think that you're capable of, but they don't know what you're battling internally. No one knows yourself better than you. So take a long, hard look at what you are capable of and, and the things in your life that are really not helping you, the things that you can get rid of and, you know, learn research and, and experiment with the things that you can add to your life and really see how they, they do affect you. And I think the more positive things, you know, that you put into your life, the, the more positive you'll become as a person, the easier your recovery journey will be. And as, as, as much as people focus on putting those positive things into your life, I think what's even more important is walking away from negativity, walking away from negative people, walking away from negative work, walking away and just leaving, pushing out those things in your life that are negative influences on you. This is what I mean by like all the flies on me. It's ridiculous. Australian summer is like full of bugs. So, you know, work out what does influence your functioning capacity. That's what I mean by recovery. That's what I mean by being sick 
is that I don't have a level of functioning capacity that I want to want to have. And I think people as a whole need to accept that mental illness does take away that functioning capacity. It does affect every aspect of your life. I mean, I, for years, I waited, I just didn't open letters. I just didn't, like, answer my phone. I hardly ever left my house. And, I mean, that's not living. That That is, like, not even surviving. That's not even doing the bare minimum. And it's not that I choose to only do the bare minimum. Like, I really am frustrated with myself so incredibly frustrated that I can't live up to my own expectations. It's not the expectations of other people in my life, despite the fact that they have really, really heavy expectations um, of me, but it's the expectations that I put on myself. And, you know, I've learned that the definition of a successful person is if you achieve whatever you set out to do. So reevaluating what it is that you are capable of doing in your day will help you feel like a successful person every day. And on a really basic level, it's human nature to survive. It's, it's a primitive instinct. So if you have survived today, then you are a successful person. You have done nothing else but made it through today. Then you are a successful person. And sometimes that is the hardest thing that you will ever do in your life. And I recognize that. I think you need to recognize that in yourself, even if no one else does, because it's so vitally important. If you make it through today, then you know that you're going to make it through tomorrow. Each day is a new struggle. We face new struggles every single day, and we face the old reoccurring struggles again and again. And I don't think it ever gets any easier. In fact, it probably gets harder because of how traumatizing it is every single time this has happened to you. But eventually, you will get better at dealing with it. Every time you fall down, you do get better at picking yourself up. But you also get better at not falling down, at finding ways to prevent that fall. And sometimes you do have to destroy yourself to truly find yourself. Sometimes you do have to just get rid just with another morning rant video. Um, so I wanted to talk about probably the most difficult part um, of my recovery journey. The biggest roadblock that I have experienced in getting help. And I think honestly it's a ridiculous concept and it just needs, it needs to stop. I have been told for a really long time that I fit into this category, this non-stereotypical you know, mentally ill person, which is what they call a highly functioning individual, a highly functioning person with mental illness. Now, if you do have highly functioning personality traits, if that is kind of who you are as a person, as like an intelligent person that has a really high functioning capacity, then I think what goes along with that is, is a low functioning capacity. Now, my psychiatrist told me the last time that I was in hospital that or I've been told actually by a number of mental health professionals that when you're a highly functioning individual and you're up here, the difference when you're sick and when you have such a low functioning capacity, because mental illness really does affect your functioning capacity, that what lies between that gap, that drop in functioning is complete distress, is complete and utter distress. Because to me, it, it's not who I am. It makes me question everything about who I am as a person, whether or not I'm a good person. It makes me feel like a failure and my fear of failure is so intense. My success drive is really important to me. And, and to feel like a successful person, to feel like, you know, I am, I'm getting somewhere in life or to feel like I'm, I'm functioning. That, that I guess highly functioning is sort of normal to me. So not being able to function is, is definitely distressing. It's, it's horrible. But the worst bit is that doctors and, and people have used this excuse to, to not help me. And I think that's really frustrating. That's really, I just, on my mind, I just can't comprehend it. Like it's, it's mind boggling, really. I've been told that I'm not sick enough for the public system 
that I keep my shit together just enough to not get that help that I need, to not fit into that system, that stereotype of what someone with mental illness is like. And I think the public system is really geared towards helping people who are a threat to society, people who... I don't like using the term like unwell enough or or not sick enough because it's not really about that, you know? I think honestly it is that that threat to society thing because it doesn't mean that I'm I'm not sick. It doesn't change my level of unwellness. If you're a highly functioning individual, you know, you're up you're up here. Potentially like up here, you know. And if that's what your baseline is, if that's kind of what you've been your whole life and suddenly you get sick, you know, that drops really drastically. Now, this concept of like being unwell or not sick enough, it's like someone whose functioning capacity might be about here. They could drop like further than me on on a scale of on a universal rating of functioning. But the thing is, that doesn't mean that we haven't lost the same amount, that it hasn't affected our lives in, in any less of a significant way. And potentially highly functioning individuals have actually dropped further, that they've actually lost more functioning capacity, they just had more, more to begin with. And I think the other thing is I present well, I present as a highly functioning individual. So for me, talking is easy, expressing myself is easy, and people think, you know, it's almost like I've made it up. That because I understand it so well that because I have enough insight not to let myself get to that stage, you know, it's like because I I take ownership of my illness because I'm proactive in my recovery, it's like I am punished for that. I am sort of disregarded and and not taken seriously. These flies, though, they are a serious issue. Um, Keep going. Keep pushing for the help that you you need. Never give up until you have reached a level of, like, recovery that, for me, it's where I can can exist and, and not be in complete level of distress, where I cannot... So thanks guys, thanks for watching my video and if you have any thoughts on, on, on the functioning capacity of mental illness, I would love to hear them. Um, put them down in the comments below and maybe check out some of my other videos because it's pretty hard to keep up. I'm, I'm uploading them every day but um, thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it, it means so much to me. Feel free to share any of my content, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, definitely spread the word. The more people that know about these things, the more people that are talking about them, the better. So, love you guys and uh, I'll see you again soon.